I'm just after seeing there that I was muted that entire time. Sorry, everybody. Let's start again. You're all very welcome to Farming Through the Seasons. My name is Amy, and today you are going to meet a special guest. His name is James, and he is a dairy farmer from County Cork. So now what I would like you to do is to just write into the Q&A box so your teachers can write in and just let us know which schools are online. So thanks to those of you who let me know I was muted. Very good. Now, see some, some schools from County Meath as well. We have Carganema National School. Hi, everybody. We have the senior room from Castletown National School, so that's fourth to sixth class. Hello, everybody. We have All Saints National School from Monaghan. Hi, everyone, you're very welcome. We also have second, third, and fourth class from St. Endas in Scotstown, so also in Monaghan, excellent. And lots of schools from County Cork. We have St. Mary's National School in Ross Carberry, County Cork. Who else is from County Cork here? We have Our Lady of Lords in Limerick. Hi, everybody. We have some junior infant classes as well. Hi, junior infants. Now there will be plenty of time to uh, to say hello again at the end, but for now I'm going to introduce you to our dairy farmer James and he is all the way in County Cork. So I also want to say a special thank you to Kerry for nominating James and we are in for a treat. So James is going to take us through autumn on the farm to let us know what is happening at the moment. So James, if you want to turn on your camera and take yourself off mute and I will stop sharing my screen. Now there's James. Yep. And we'll just oh. make sure that James's video is spotlighted for everybody at home. Now, so James should be up on your screen. So James, I'll hand over to you and you can take away, say hello to all the boys and girls. Hello all. Um, so I am a dairy farmer, as was said, and I am farming here in Drumcarif and County Park. So we are milking all Holstein cows. So they're a, a, a breed of cows that are, are black and white. And we milk our cows using two Delaval robots. So uh, most farmers in the country, so I think is it 96% of farmers in the country, milk their cows through what's known as a parlor where they put the cups that harvest the milk from the cows on themselves. So we actually have two machines that do that for us. So I'll show you, I'll, I'll go towards the robots and I will show you how they work. And um, I'm just trying to pick which robot is better. So yeah, we'll just go into this one and I will flip around my camera. Okay, so this is a Delaval robot. So as some of you might know, a cow has four teeth. So, and all four of those teeth produce milk. So what, these are called cups. So there's each teeth gets a cup. And uh, at the moment, this cow is milking on all four teeth. And as the flow of milk stops from each quarter, um, the cups are taken off individually. So this is the robot arm. And after a while, when this cow has uh, finished milking and the next one comes in, where we'll see how the cups go on using the robotic arm. So just to show you, so this is the screen of the robot. So the cow inside here eating her, uh, we call them, they can be called nuts, ration or um, concentrates. I'll just go around and get a better angle. Um, she's eating, they're, they're really dry, they're really sweet. Cows love them. So she's looking at us here. She's, she knows she's the star of the show. So um, they're eating them. That's based off of how much milk they give. So this allows them to keep them in good health. So we just saw there, the cups are coming off now. She's finishing milking on, she's finished milking on two of her quarters and there's still two milking. So I'll just show you there. Um, 
So there's still milk flowing. So the inside disc here, the 840, that's the grams per minute of milk coming from that quarter. And then the 1.9 is the total amount of milk that came from that quarter. So she has made milk eight liters in total in this milking. And uh, so there's another, the other two cups are coming on. So her tea tins now, so we can just see she's four teeth there. Her tea tins now will be sprayed with, um, it's both a disinfectant and a moisturizer. So it keeps her uh, teeth in good condition. So you can just see it jetting out there from the robot arm. And the robot arm now will wash itself. So the camera screen is kept clean. So I can see in future. The floor is washed of the robot and the cup, the four cups are also rinsed out to, to stop any disease contamination from cow to, to, from cow to cow. So that cow has now left. The front gate is closed and the back gate is open. And yeah, there's a cow eagerly trying to get in. There was one lazy cow in the way and this eager cow, she's the younger cow, she's more eager to get in. She's in and she's ready to be milked. So firstly, with the Delaval Rover, it picks up, this is called a wash cup, and it uses 20 degree water and compressed air to wash the teeth. So that makes sure that the milk that goes into our bulk tank for collection is as clean as it possibly can be. Um, so um, you and me can drink, can drink it. So if you wash the four individual teeth, so that will take. So in total, it usually takes the robot arm around 45 seconds to wash the four teeth and to put the cups on. So we just we just keep watching until the teeth washing is finished and the four cups are on. So the four cups are ready and waiting. So the robot arm catches these hoops and uh, puts them on. So they're, they're kept on with a vacuum, something similar to the Hoover at home. And uh, they squeeze uh, every few, every second or so. And that squeezes the milk out of the cow's teeth like this. So the cups are going on there now. I'll get you a better angle on that. So the arm goes back, catches the cup, brings it in, and puts it straight on the teeth. And its vacuum is keeping that on, and it's uh, what's called pulsating, and that harvests the milk. So now the robot arm will just pack up and just hold the tube so the cow can kick, kick those tubes off. So that is a, a robot now. Um, you've seen how the cups come off and uh, the cheats are sprayed with the disinfectant. So I'll just come, up, come out here and just show you some of our cows. So all these cows are waiting to be milked. Um, so cows usually obviously sleep at night like ourselves and uh, they kind of get milking from around six in the morning onwards. You probably have noticed that the mornings and the evenings are getting darker. So that slows the cows flow. Um, but they're pretty good to come in. You also might notice that the cows have, uh, well, these cows have three yellow tags. So the one with the 1859 there, that they have to be put on from the Department of Agriculture to identify the cow. But the orange tags, interestingly, they are kind of like a Fitbit. So they tell us what movement the cows have, whether they're eating, whether they're lying down, whether they're walking, running. Um, so, and it, it helps us monitor the cow's health. We also have a cow brush. So the cows love a scratch and this helps them scratch even better. So it just rotates around and there's bristles on it. The cows love it and it keeps them looking really good. And so I'll just keep walking around here. So all of these cows that you're seeing would have calved in the spring. So January, February, March, and some of them in April. And at the moment, we are um, feeding some silage at night um, as it's a bit wet and uh, cows don't really graze as much as they need to when it's wet. So uh, we give them a bit of silage to come in when it's, uh, and they can eat that when it's dry and they can, eat re uh, they can eat the silage really quickly compared to grass because grass takes a long time to eat. Um, 
So probably over the next couple of days, um, the cows will be will become moving more into our winter phase, and the cows will be staying in during the night, and uh, then probably in around the middle of November they'll be in full time. So um, just to keep them out the rain. So this is typically accommodation for a winter accommodation for cows. So they're called cubicles. They lie down on mats. Uh, so those black things are called mats. They are, um, they're about uh, an inch thick and they're really comfortable and they keep them warm from the bare concrete. So each cow has her own stall. So we have more stalls than cows, which makes it even more comfortable and less stressful for the cows. So we also have a few cows calving in the autumn. This year we've only nine cows calving in the autumn. Um, so here they are, they're waiting. They're waiting to calve. Um, there's one, this lady here, she will probably calve within the next couple of days, I would say. And I'll also just carry you down here to, so this is one of our two tractors on the farm. We bought the, this this year, it's called New Holland. So you have probably seen plenty of tractors on the roads and uh, the blue ones are called New Hollands. So that's it. And I'll just carry you down here to see, we have had four arrivals on the farm over the past couple of weeks. So I'll just carry you down here to see the calves. Um, our cat might, might also be around the straw. Um, so, I think we might have lost James there for a little second. Let's see if he comes back. James, if you can hear us there, the signal is just a little bit low in that calf shed. Now, if he doesn't come back now in just a few seconds, I have I have got a a little video to show you as well, so don't worry. It's oh. yeah, I should be back there again. Yeah, you're back there. No worries. Yeah. I think the, the signal's a little low. Yeah, the signal's quite low on the calf house. I hope you saw some of them. So we have four calves at the moment. Uh, we have. Gosh, uh, Sorry, James, three. just one second. We didn't actually see any of the calves, but what you might do is you could maybe send, uh, you could take a picture afterwards, and if you send it on to me, I'll send it out to the pupils. That's super. Yeah, that's perfect. perfect. Okay, I'll hand um, that over to you. Thank you. That's perfect. Um, so I might just flip around the camera there for myself. And um, what we might do, we might go for a, a bit of a walk outside, and we'll just uh, see... So you've probably seen cows grazing outdoors. So um, I'll just show you some of our grass. So So this is our robotic grazing yard. So it tells the cows where to go. So with robots, the cows can milk whenever they want to milk. And so you, we give them fresh grass three times a day to just encourage them to come into mill. So now this cow is going out of what's known as paddock C. So she goes through this uh, diversion gate and she'll also go through this diversion gate. And she go to her right and off to that paddock. Um, so this is some of our farm. So I'll just swing around the camera. And there's also some more land beyond that ditch there. So yeah, um, I don't really have too much more to to show you uh, today. It's a quite a quiet time of year on the farm. Why well, I had hoped that there would be a bit more activity in the yard as we are going cutting our maize silage either today or tomorrow, and there would have been a lot of tractors and whatnot in the yard. But that didn't happen as it was quite wet last night. Um, so if you have any questions, I'll gladly answer them. Super. Thanks a million, James. That was that was great. It was amazing to see the robot in action. I've actually never seen a robot in action. So thanks so much for sharing that with us. 
So we'll open up the Q&A now. So do any of the pupils in the classroom have any questions for James? We are having a, a session about autumn on the farm. So James had said he's got a few cows that are about to calve in the autumn, but typically it'd be very busy on the farm in springtime for calves, but he's got a, a few cows who are about to have their little calves. Um, and then there's also milking is of course still continuing at the moment. So does anybody have any questions for James? Oh, there's a few popping in there. Um, James, your first question is, do you drink your own cow's milk? We actually don't. Um, so when the milk is collected from our farm, it goes to the milk processor. So in our case, that's carry uh, agribusiness. And it goes through a process called pasteurization. So that heats up the milk to about 70 degrees and um, that, make, that kills any bacteria that might have got into the milk. So that makes it healthier for us to drink so we won't get sick from the milk. So all uh, milk in Ireland has to be pasteurized by law unless you have a special permission to do so. So we actually don't drink our own milk just for that fact. Uh, so we, we, buy, we still do buy our own milk in the shop. But if we do run chat, we will run back to our own uh, milk tank. Brilliant. Uh, loads of excellent questions coming in. So do you buy any of your cows? Do you buy? Any no, we actually don't. We, we breed all of our own cows have been born on this farm. Uh, so we don't buy any cows. Um, I'm 27 and my dad hasn't bought any animals uh, since I was born. So no, they're all, um, they're all homebred as we call them. Brilliant. Um, lots of questions about the robots and um, are the robots expensive and how many do you have so we have two robots and yeah they're quite expensive to buy um but it does give us it gives me a uh, quite a good lifestyle i'm not i don't have to be on the farm in the morning to milk early and i don't have to be there probably more importantly in the evening to milk so i'll just flip around my camera there and just show the two robots so there's one, that's robot number one and robot number two. And this is the big two of cows waiting to get in. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, how, how many cows do you have all together? Uh, at the moment, we have 115 cows at the moment. Um, so we normally have 120 cows, um, but we sold a few as uh, some, of the, some of the pupils might know. Um, it was quite a dry summer and we couldn't grow the grass due to the lack of rain. So we sold some cows um, just to make sure we had enough feed for the cows then and during the winter. Brilliant. Um, a, a pupil called Anya in fifth class in Crusheen National School wants to know if you have any bulls on the farm. No, we don't. We don't have any bulls on the farm except for the baby calves. They, so at the moment we have three baby bull calves, but we have no adult bulls. So Dad got a bit of a fright from a bull when he was my age, and we haven't had any bulls since, um, just for safety, basically. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. You have to be very careful around bulls and also around cows that have a new baby calf. Large animals yeah. can be very dangerous. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how many times a week does your milk lorry visit? <sighs> So actually, just before we went on the call, the milk lorry visited. So um, it visits every three days. So it can be any day of the week, but it, our milk is typically collected every three days. I'm just walking out there to show you our uh, milk tank. That, so we'll store, obviously store the milk for three days until the, the lorry comes to collect it. And our milk uh, typically goes to make chocolate in Cadbury's. Um, Sometimes during the winter it goes to make cheese in New Market, but most of the time it goes to Rathmore in County Kerry to, be, to make chocolate. That so is just, amazing. I'm sure all the pupils loved to hear that. So James so is supposed to make chocolate. Yeah, so that's our milk tank, the Delaval silver tank. That's our milk tank. It holds uh, 20,000 litres of milk, so that's a lot of cartons. That certainly is. Um, Lots of excellent questions. Luke in fourth class in Crusheen wants to know, do you have a silage pit or do you have bales? 
we have a silage pit and we also have some bales. So typically we, we would put uh, two cuts of silage uh, into the pit. So usually it would be cut the first couple of weeks in May and we cut again the first couple of weeks in July. That goes into a pit and all other silage in are made into round bales. Um, and we also, our maize that will be cut probably later today is also going into a pit. Very good. Um, the pupils in BNS in Cardona in County Donegal, they just want to say hello. So hello to all of you up in Donegal. Hello. I actually went on holidays in Donegal this year. So I, I, I've, if, if, eventually I got to the last county in Ireland that I had visited. Oh, wow. Okay. Very good. Hmm. Now, um, so Carganema National School would like to know, do you name your cows? Yes, we do. Um, so I'll just flip around again. So our herd is what it's called pedigree registered. So we are required to, so our, our name is the Bullimore herd and uh, we're the Buck family. So, um, so we are required to, to record who the mother and the father of a calf is. And so that's what called pedigree registered is. So they're, they're all full Holstein. And um, so when you are registering them, you give them a, a name. So their first name is Bullamore. So that's the herd where they're from. Then they get their family name. So some of our family names are Begonia, Eileen, um, Trudy, Ruth, um, I'm kind of struggling. I think there's an Amelia family, a Daphne family, and then they get the name of the bull of their father bull, their the their father's name. So that would be the bull. So um, their typical name there. There's uh, I think our best cow is Bullamore Gazy Begonia. So Gazy would be her father. Yeah. So we we do name all our cows. But typically, we would know them by their numbers. We, I wouldn't know all of their individual names. So we'll say, no, this cow, that's turned to us. If I can turn the camera. She's 1704. You can see the map on her bum. Uh, so she's 1704. That's what we'd know them as. Super. I'm sure there's an Amelia out there in the classroom and maybe a Ruth as well. Maybe they recognize their names. Yeah. Hmm. What other questions? Oh, this is a good question. Uh, why why did you choose dairy farming farming instead of beef farming? So this farm has been a dairy farm for as long as my I can remember and my father can remember. There was beef and sheep and tillage here when my father was young, but over time, um, the, the those enterprises were stopped, and it's basically if unfortunately in Ireland if you're young and you want to be a full-time dairy farmer um, you it, dairying is probably the best industry to make money from so farming is a business and we do need we need money to to buy food to buy clothes to buy cars to live in a house so uh, dairy farming is the the most profitable industry in Ireland the farming industry in Ireland and um, it was also here as well. So that's they're probably the reasons why we're in dairy farming. There's also probably the most work typically in dairy farming as well, as the cows need to be milked and uh, you would typically have more stock as well uh, being a dairy farm. So I hope that answers that question. I, I would say it does. So I think we have quite time for maybe two more questions. So let's go with... Um, what is your favorite thing about farming? Um, I suppose what I love most is um, no two days are the same. There's always something gone wrong or there's something different to be done. So you'll never be stuck at one job too long. Um, you'll never be dra tractor driving too long. You'll never be working with animals too long. Um, that's probably what I love the most. And also you're your own boss as well when you're a farmer. Um, so you decide what to do. You're not told what to do. You decide what what is uh, needs to be done and what should be done today. So that's probably uh, 
that's probably why I like I, I love farming. It's just you can never tell what the day is going to bring. Yeah, lots of lots of variety being a farmer. Yeah. Um. So we'll just go with our our last question. So we're in autumn. What is the biggest job that needs to be done in autumn on the farm? Um, autumn is actually a very quiet time of year. So it's probably bringing the cows in for the winter would be the biggest job. So um, I just flip around my camera there. So all of this shed has to be power washed. So it's perfectly clean for the cows to come in. And so that's probably the biggest job is getting the shed cleaned and uh, fully sanitized so there's no, no uh, bugs from the previous winter in the shed. So that's probably the biggest job is just getting the, the, getting the, the shed ready for the cows and bring them in as well. That can be quite a, quite a big job at times. Brilliant. Well, that is all that we have time for today in our autumn session. So I would like to say a big thank you to James. Thank you so much for showing us around your farm during autumn. And for those of you in your classroom, we will see you again in December for our winter session and your teachers will be informed of when we'll be holding that webinar. But for now, thanks a million and we would like to wish you a lovely weekend and we will see you next time. So bye everybody. Bye. Bye.